morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word for Tuesday. Hey, join me over in Joshua chapter 5. We'll look also at chapter 6, maybe allude to some things in the New Testament as we decide if this is a Christophany or not. Is this an Old Testament appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ? Hey, let's check it out, see what we discover. We pick up the story of the promised land with Joshua leading the children of Israel across the Jordan and beginning the conquest. One of the big hindrances in their way is the city of Jericho. We read yesterday all about Rahab, the scarlet thread of redemption, the picture of the spies that were sent into the land. But in particular today, we're going to see a brand new character appear to Joshua. So while they're thinking about how they are going to possibly deal with this mighty city of Jericho, one of the uh, oldest inhabited places on the planet, somebody shows up. We pick up in verse 13 of chapter 5. It says, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua approached him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, I have now come as commander of the Lord's army. Then Joshua bowed with his face to the ground in homage and asked him, what does my Lord want to say to his servant? The commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did that. Now, who is this guy, the commander of the Lord's army? Now, we're dealing with some of these Old Testament appearances of Christ using the walk through the Bible devotional on these issues. And in particular, they've got one that is entitled Victor. And it deals with this particular passage. Listen to what they say, and then I'll tell you what I say and bring you back to Joshua 6. It says that Joshua was a well-fortified city with thick walls and plenty of warriors. And because attacking such a, such a city must have been an intimidating prospect for Israel's people, God told Joshua numerous times to be strong and courageous and relayed the message to his army and the general population. Militarily, they were overmatched. By human standards, the situation looked impossible. But not long before Israel's battle against Jericho, Joshua encounters this man we just read about with a drawn sword. He was a divine visitor, a messenger with a larger purpose than the battle at hand. And when Joshua asked him whose side he was on, you saw what he said. He refused to choose because he's commander of the Lord's army. The real question was, who was on his side? So Joshua bowed down in reverence and submitted to an authority much higher than his own. Now the commander of the Lord's army could have been an angel, but he seemed to allow Joshua to worship him, which an angel of God would never do. For this reason, many people speculate that this is Jesus hundreds of years before his earthly advent, and it makes sense. Jesus comes to win victories. No walls are too thick for him, no army too strong. He demonstrated in the Gospels that no matter how impossible a situation looks, even as impossible as a sealed tomb, he can overcome it. When he enters the battle, everything changes. If he fights, he wins. You know, that's why one of my favorite songs in my playlist is one called The Battle Belongs to the Lord. <laughs> one that as you listen to it, its words just say, hey, you know, you, you've got to put this in perspective. If the Lord is in charge, if the commander of the Lord's army is in charge in your life, you have a possibility of winning. Go against him and all you can do is lose. Well, back to the devotional. That's how Joshua's encounter with the mysterious commander of the Lord's army points to New Testament victories, but God would soon lead Joshua in a strategy that made absolutely no sense militarily. It looked absurd. 
the idea that marching around a city seven days in a row, 13 times in total, and adding some shouts and trumpet blasts could win the victory is laughable, except that it was God's plan. And he backed it up with his power. Centuries later, the idea that a Messiah could suffer and die by humiliating execution in order to conquer evil and overcome death appeared laughable too. But God backed it up with his power. The two commanders who met near Jericho before the battle had a lot in common. And the one who bowed learned how to win supernatural victories through the one who stood with a drawn sword. Now, some of you may be asking, well, Craig, what is your opinion? Do you believe this was a Christophany? Was this the Lord Jesus or was it an angel? I mean, the English language uses the word angel to describe him, although it says an angel of the Lord. And I'll tell you why I believe it's so. First of all, as the devotional pointed out, Yes, Joshua worshipped him, and you're not supposed to worship angels, and he was not rebuked for worshipping him. On the contrary, he was told to remove the sandals from his feet because the place where you are is holy. It was quite reminiscent of what God told Moses to do before the burning bush. So as you get into the next chapter, though, I think you have the answer. Keep in mind, Chapter divisions in the Bible are human inventions, insertions, so that we can find our way around the scriptures. But this is really a continual thought. Here is Joshua, and before him appears this commander of the Lord's army. And then we have, in the beginning of chapter 6, God speaking to Joshua. Well, how was he speaking to Joshua? Well, he was speaking through the commander of the Lord's army, which I believe is a Christophany. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ standing before Joshua, telling him how he's going to win the battle. Because the very next verse says this, Now Jericho was strongly fortified because of the Israelites, no one leaving or entering. And the Lord said to Joshua, Who? The Lord said to Joshua, now, before we see what the Lord said, I want you to keep in mind that there are many translations of Old Testament scriptures. In your Bible, it probably says, as it does in the Christian Standard Bible, the Lord with capital letters involved there. And you're supposed to know by your own Bible study that that indicates something else is there, not just Lord in a general sense, as in a boss, but no, it's recognizing God Almighty. And that's why many translations actually will say Adonai or Jehovah or Yahweh said to Joshua. So what we've got going on here is an actual conversation between the commander of the Lord's army, who is Jesus Christ in person, and Joshua as he gives him detailed instructions for battle. Now, you may have a problem with that. Well, now, my Lord is meek and mild, and he's sweet and forgiving, and he doesn't give instructions for battle, does he? I mean, come on now, he's, he's not that kind of a God, is he? Well, that's why you need to spot Jesus all over the Old Testament, because you're going to discover that, yes, the rabbis were correct. Some of the Old Testament prophecies do predict a Messiah that's coming as a mighty warrior to conquer that picture is fulfilled completely when you come to the end of the book of Revelation, when the Lord Jesus himself is returning, doing what? Leading the armies of heaven. The heavenly host is behind him, and they're not a heavenly host with harps and singing sweet songs. No, they're coming to fight the battle of Armageddon. So friends, this picture of the Lord Jesus Christ is quite consistent Throughout Scripture, yes, he comes as the suffering Savior and the Passover Lamb to offer us salvation and forgiveness and a place in God's family, but there's a time when you have to fight. And here, the Lord Jesus 
I believe, is giving Joshua direct instructions on how to win the battle. And here's what he said. The Lord said to Joshua, look, I have handed Jericho, its king, and its best soldiers over to you. March around the city with all the men of war, circling the city one time. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horn trumpets in front of the ark. That's the ark of the covenant. But on the seventh day, march around the city seven times when the priests blow the ram's horns, when there's a prolonged blast of the horn and you hear it sound, sounds, have all the troops give a mighty shout and then the city wall will collapse and the troops will advance. Each man straight, straight, straight in to take care of uh, conquering Jericho. This is what's going to happen straight ahead, straight ahead. Friends, this is not an accident, and it's not an ordinary angel. I believe in my heart that Joshua 5 introduces us to the Lord Jesus Christ standing as commander of the Lord's army, who then gives the instructions in the very next verses over how the city of Jericho is to be conquered. Oh, friends, we've seen Jesus a number of places, but today we've seen him as the ultimate general of the army of the ages. Let's see what we, what we see of Jesus tomorrow when we wake up in the Word. God bless you.